What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to the Biz with Z right here, right now on My Fair Swings Radio. We got David Dwayne, of course, y'all know me, but we got my good friend, 3D Nati. If y'all don't know who Nati is, I mean, how do you guys not know? She's working with Russell Simmons right now. I mean, definitely doing her thing, got New Orleans on lock, and I mean, she's definitely the illest female rapper out here. What's going on, Nati? I'm good. Thank you for the, the great introduction. <laughs> it's nice I talking mean, to you. It's been a little minute. I know. You know, I had to give you the right introduction because we go way back from when I was in the middle <laughs> school back. <laughs> right, 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 right. Right, so it's good, it's good to talk to you. Absolutely. You. And let me, I don't know the much. I got to say, I'm so proud of you, all the success that you've got going on right now. I mean, congratulations on it all. Thank you. Thank you. I've been trying to, I've been working real hard, you know, um, both as an independent artist and now as a signed artist. So, you know, the, the, the things have changed. My position um, in the music industry is definitely beginning to shift and change, but um, my grind has not changed. You know, I'm still grinding. I'm still working as hard as I was the last time you talked to me. You know? Absolutely. And um, how to tell us, you know, you know, how you like growing up in New Orleans, just in case they're not too familiar with your story like I am. Kind of tell them about, you know, growing up in New Orleans. Um, I mean, New Orleans, a, a lot of people ask me this question. I've, I'm so surprised at how many people haven't seen my city or, you know, of course, a lot of people know what happened with Hurricane Katrina. But as far as the history, a lot of people don't really know. But my city is a real cultural and and I think the best way to describe it is passionate you know uh it's a it's a real passionate city and I come from that I come from that era of you know all of these rappers like Lil Wayne and and Juvenile and Master P and Soldier Slim and and all of those artists um who kind of came out as independent artists and, and and did it their way and had that relentless attitude I come from mm-hmm. that, you know what I'm saying, and and the way that I grew up, you know, I I I, I was, you know, I'm the oldest of um, three. I'm the only girl, and uh, you know, I had a lot of things that was going on in my household as far as parents on drugs, and, and my father committed suicide when I was ten years old, and I think a lot of that, the way that I grew up, and and in the uh, background of my city has a lot to do with my music today and the fact that I was an independent artist that pretty much didn't take no for an answer. You know what I'm saying? I think all of that is a direct a direct um contribute to uh mm-hmm. my, my city and how I grew up, you know. Absolutely. And you've been doing this thing on your own for like a long time. I mean going from doing your music videos to editing uh, mixing, mixing yourself down, doing your website. I was just like, damn, this girl is talented. Like, you really doing what independent artists really need to be doing. I, I ain't have ever right. seen people do it like how you do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, that's and that and that too. You know, I can I can um I can say that's a part of New Orleans too because you know the way that I started as far as rapping and, and doing all of these things on my own and really. You know, nobody starts out and say, I want to be an independent artist. People usually say, well, you know, a little while ago, people would usually say, I want to get a record deal, you know, because they thought that was the end all be all. Well, once I didn't get a record deal or once these things wasn't happening for me quick enough, then I had to put my and into my own hands, you know, because I didn't have the money to invest in myself that way or to get a multi-million dollar or even hundreds of thousand dollar video shot for myself so I went and brought my own camera you know what I'm saying and I taught myself how to shoot my own videos and I was spending so much money going into the studio and sitting there with engineers who really didn't take things as seriously as I took it you know what I'm saying so I went and brought my own studio equipment you know all of these things just I had to do that that was it's not because I, I just want to say I do all my shit on my own. I had to. I had no choice. I know that's right. And a lot of people, I remember, like, you really got that, 
started to take up started to take up on you. And I was trying to tell people before, I'm saying, now nah, T is going to be the one that's going to blow, y'all. And when she blow and it, it, it hits, y'all going to be like, try to get to it and not be able to. Especially when you did switch. Can I just yeah. say, I still do back to watching that video. I was like, yo, this bitch really did edit it like this. And then she switched it like, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yo. Oh, my goodness. I still listen to that record today. And I was just like, whoa. Yeah, yeah that, that video was very important to me. Like, I mean, the, the creative uh, aspect of that has a lot to do with why people love that, that video so much. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure you go to 3 d and, and watch it. It's called Switch. Um, and it was a it was a um, a very important video for for, uh, for both my career and who I was trying to introduce myself as you know as an artist. Of course, I had music before that, but that video showed my lyrical ability. It showed the creative side, you know, uh, just all of that. That video was important for me. Absolutely, and even from the, doing that video, it got uh, Timberland's uh, attention, and I never got a chance to talk to you about it, but. How, how was it, you know, to get that, you know, call from him and stuff like that, and y'all just connect? Cause, I mean, that's incredible, right there. Um, that video, I shot that video, um, in 2000, I think 2012, and I put it up. I think I did it in uh, July of 2012, I think, and I put it up on um, YouTube, and. I got a call from, I got a call from, well, I got an email first from somebody over at Timberland Camp, and it was like, uh, we want to we wanna talk to you, Dave, and um, there's someone that really want to talk to you, whatever, whatever, so I'm like, all right, you know, I don't know what it is, and I was handling everything myself, so I'm like, all right, just, right. whoever it is, just tell them to call me. Then, you know, I, I got in touch with Timberland, and um, he flew me out there the next day, well, the same day, really. Because that happened early in the morning. He flew me out there the same day. So I, wow. I flew directly. Yeah, I flew directly to um, to Miami. And I was working in a hit factory. And I had no expectations from that situation. I, you know, of course, Timberland is one of the greatest producers of our time. And arguably of all time. And um, I just was going to meet my favorite producer. I didn't know what I was going to work with him. I thought at the most I probably would be out there for three days. And those three days ended up turning into 10 months. I was living, you know, I was living out there from there to Virginia to, um, to from there to Virginia to Atlanta and just working and doing music and it, and it turned into, that video turned into um, him, them offering me a deal. You know, uh, which I didn't take at that time, but you know that, like I said, that video was very important for me. It, it, it really was. Right. And with you not taking the deal, do you think there was more so you not being ready at that time to go ahead and you know make a commitment like that with a with a label? What what um, prompted you not to? Because I thought you were going to. I was like, oh, she she got a sign. She got to. That's too damn hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, not necessarily. I don't think that that it was because I wasn't ready. I just think that um, some of the things in a contract wasn't right for me, you know, right. um, just as just as an artist, just as a, a person and who I'm trying to be as an artist. I think some of the things in that contract uh, would not have let me be who I want to be as an artist and, and reach the type of people that I want to reach, you know. Uh, so that, that was that was basically it. It wasn't... It, it wasn't that I wasn't ready. It was that um, it just wasn't right for me. Right, and that's and that's a good thing that you've realized. Did you realize that it wasn't a good thing for you? I mean, even now, when you know signing the contract with Russell and uh, Steve, it's like that. You you know you sat there, you took the time, and you said like you know this is good, this is not good, and stuff like that. And, and mm-hmm. let's let's just talk about working with them and how they you know you guys get in touch with them because I mean that is. That's incredible. I don't care what no one's yeah. got to say. What, 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 what that is right there, can't no other independent artist say that they did that. Yeah. Well, uh, Steve, Steve Rifkin, of course, he's the one who signs legendary acts like Wu-Tang and, and Big Pun. And he even had um, Fat Joe and Remy Ma and, and, and uh, 
Mob Deep and so many other artists and of course Russell Simmons let alone the um, hip hop and what he did with Def Jam and, and what he did for hip hop as a whole but you know what he does on a on a business side and philanthropy and all of these other things they are just people that um, they saw past they saw not just who I am as a as a MC and as an artist and as a female quote unquote a female rapper but they saw who I am as a businesswoman and and that was very important to me you know what I'm saying I'm coming from the hood I, I ain't have shit I come from nothing and I think it's, it's very important for uh, um, for an uh, independent artist not to be desperate there's a difference in being hungry and being thirsty never supposed to be thirsty because when you're thirsty you right. act out of desperation you know what I'm saying and I, I, I made it a point that even when I didn't have shit I never moved out of desperation so the fact that they saw that in me and the fact that they recognized me as a peer and not just as an employee they looking at me like this bitch could really make moves in the industry. You know what I'm saying? And she's she's right. not only is she an incredible artist, but like I, I, I fuck with her. I know that she can handle her business, and she she's not some ignorant artist. We just pulling off the street. We gonna throw her some coins, and then we gonna get a little money out of her and kill her career. You know they respect me as a peer, so that was one of the main things. And you could tell that, you know, just from our working relationship and what has been going on so far. So it's, it's been great so far. It's been great working with him so far. That's right. And, and big congratulations on that again, because, I mean, that that's so huge right there. And I've got to even ask you, what is one of the, like, what what have they, you know, been, like, showing you, like, with the industry that you might have not even known um, before working with them now? Um. Well, you know, if you listen to some of my records, because I'm very transparent in my music, and a lot of times, exactly what I think, I put it in my music, because I feel like the records are my best friend, right? So I, I, right. I tell them, I tell them everything. The record is like a diary to me. So if you listen to some of my previous music, you hear me talking about the resentment that I have towards the record industry and the hip hop industry, because I thought that. Everybody that I get with, they would force me to be somebody else. You know what I'm saying? They were going to force me just to sell records. And that is one of the biggest things, biggest shocks working with them. You know, like I said, and I think I, it has a lot to do with the way that they respect me and the way that I think. Because they're really, it's more so of an investment in the artist and less of a, they're not trying to, you know, like rape the artist or tell them what to do. And that's the biggest, that's the biggest change or the biggest thing that I've seen. I've seen that these people, they haven't forgot that they are human and they have not forgot, forgotten how to work with the artist and, 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 and help them visualize and realize their dreams. You know what I'm saying? And it's not about, hey, I, I did this and I started this and I founded this and I'm going to make you into this because there is this formula. They're still learning with me, and that's the greatest shit ever. You know what I'm saying? That's true. That is so true. Yep. And what the re- really shit ever is your new single, Fake Friends. Can I can I tell you? <laughs> I we all can relate to that, but I can relate to that to most. Cause damn, I got I probably got maybe about two loyal motherfuckers in there. I can call a friend. Yeah. So I gotta ask you. With, with the writing with this record, like, where, where did you get the, um, the inspiration? Because you, I mean, the way you, your writing style and where you get it from, when it, I know how you do, but tell everybody where you got the inspiration for this record for it, particularly. Well, I, the the song Fake Friends is not one of those cliches, I got signed and bitch, I'm on it, look hot. You know, it's not that. The song is Fake Friends is um, basically me talking about how I see people changing around me like I am I'm definitely I'm a lot wiser than I was but as far as the way that I treat people I I haven't changed you know what I'm saying and a lot of the people around me they have begun to change because they finally they're finally seeing the shit that been telling them was was going to happen you know you know how you might have a vision board (laughs) <laughs> you know how you yeah. might have, you know, <laughs> it's just me. maybe this is me, but you know how you might have some 
grandiose plans for yourself, some, some dreams for yourself, and you, you try to voice mm-hmm. these things with the people that you think should care or they should give you some type of exactly. motivation. Exactly. And you don't really get that, you know, and it's like a letdown. And now when the things start to happen, you know, you have this lackluster response to the, to you know, to those same people because it's like, all right, I told y'all this shit was going to happen. And now all of a sudden you're pretending like you was there every step of the way when you were not. You know what I'm saying? And that's what fake mm-hmm. friends is about. Like fake friends is, is that, and it's not just about, you know, financial or financial change or, or, or just me because I signed a record deal and people change. And this is everything. You might have was trying to plan and get a, a promotion at work. And you told right. yourself you were going to get it. You told everybody around you you were going to get it, and nobody believed you. And now you got it. Now everybody treating you because they want that position. They want you to promote them or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I ain't working a little while. So I ain't had a legal job in a minute, so I don't know how that whole thing works, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You know what I mean. But it, it's about that. It's just about the people changing around you. You know what I'm saying? And, and you being smart enough to recognize that. Right. And and I tell you, when I heard that record, I was like, "Yo, they're they're not to go spin exactly how I feel." Because what I, 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 you know, I think back to like the, the previous music you had, like going back to the mix and stuff like that. I'm like, "Yo, she's really spitting the stuff that I was connecting with from back then." And even like when I was trying to tell people about you used to run together, I was like, "Listen, Nati is going to be that chick." telling you right. and then i told him that i said dave is gonna be that nigga oh sure <laughs> sure mm-hmm. right. i'm sure you are you not and then now they see it and now when they look at you and they look at me they're like oh you're all right dave they, they, i see you girl not tea she was on sway in the morning da, 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 da. oh my gosh david yeah. you you was just up in new york with kid ink i'm like duh huh? i told you that was going to happen thank you for doubting me <laughs> <laughs> but those things, it's it's very important on how you respond to that, though. You know what I'm saying? How you respond to when you find out somebody is a fake friend is very important because that shows who you mm-hmm. really are, who what your true character is. And I make sure that I let it be known, not in a malicious way. But, right. you know, I use that. I, I make that. I take the way that somebody treat me now, and I know that it's not true. I know that they, they don't really fuck with me like that. I use that as motivation to continue to, you know, to, to fuel, to get me to the true success that I'm that I'm planning, you know, that I have. I, I'm planning for myself. I, I'm using that as, as motivation. Instead of, yeah, bitch, I did it, and focusing on that negativity, I'm using it mm-hmm. to fuel me to get to where I'm trying to go, you know. So now, is this one of, is this like your main single that you're, um, you're going to push off your album or or you got um, that is just no, that, buzz right now. No, that isn't. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm throwing that out there, you know, to hit the streets and stuff like that. And we're gonna work on a video for it. But um, I have, man, I have so many records. Like I have a record that I did called Roleplay. I wrote the record and I got um, August Elstein on the hook. You know, so that's that's nice. a record that's gonna that's, that'll be out soon. And um, I did some stuff with. The producer of Fake Friends also produced this record uh, with Slim of 112. And I, I don't okay. know how we we, we going to move. I just have so many records, so many records, but I, I definitely think that um, I'm going to move with the August Alcina record. The role play was on my mixtape previously, and I had another singer right. doing it. And um, then August, August did it. And um, I just worked with so many different artists, but... That fake friends is is for the streets because they had to come out first, and I I push for that. I like look, I need I need motherfuckers to know how I feel right now in this moment. Mm-hmm. Fuck, we're not gonna talk about radio and club and all that other bullshit. We'll do that later. Let's let's put this out there, you know. Right. That's what that was about. Give something real, and I respect that because yeah. I tell you right now that was the record that I needed, and in, in today now because. I'm going through my stuff like everybody else. I'm like, you know what? This is exactly how I feel. So I got to say, thank you, my friend, for doing that. Because I was like, yes, thank you. Rotate you got that. <laughs> so right. I wanted to also add you because you mentioned the fact New Orleans. You're from New Orleans. August from New Orleans. And I mean, New Orleans is really taking the hell over in the music industry. How, how are you feeling about that? You guys got 
the James, Frank, Dawn. I mean, everybody, like, is coming yeah, from the water um, right now. It has, a, it has something to do. I mean, we, we, it has something to do with the fact that there has always been, New Orleans is a musical city from blues and jazz and, you know, like, there is, there always had that huge um, musical element in my city, you know, and for a minute, of course, it was Wayne and Cash Money and, I mean, well, you know, Cash Money, uh, Master P and all of that, and they kind of took over in the 90s, and then they kind of got away from that and went to, you know, the South, and then it went to um, Atlanta and back to New York and Houston. And it, it's it always been, hip-hop has always been, um, it always moves to these different regions at times. And I think we're just working on getting our just do. It's about time. You know what I'm saying? And we, we've always mm-hmm. had very talented artists, so it's not just, and August Alcina who can sing, there's other great artists who can sing from the city. There's not just a 3B not T who can rap, there's other great artists who can rap from the city. There's other there's other great Frank Oceans and you know, you know what I'm saying? We we come from right. a city where there's so many talented artists here. That's right. And I'm just glad you're one of them that are that people are finally really seeing like like I said, mm-hmm. that they would see back then. So I mean, mm-hmm. it's it, I'm happy. I'm really happy for you all the way. I appreciate that. I appreciate, and I know you mean it. You're not a friend like a like a fake friend would. I know you mean it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, not see. Thanks so much for you know being available to come on the show and you know show love and you know let my um listeners get a chance to know who you are because a lot of people they don't know but now now they know because we because we was playing no love when it came out and i and i still find myself playing i'm like you know what let me get that no love right 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 thank you uh thank you for having me i'm i'm happy to dip through, you know, fuck with me when you need me. <laughs> Just <laughs> fuck with me. Make sure make sure everybody who's tuning in, make sure you go to my website, 3 dnacicom or follow me on Instagram. It's the same thing, 3D-N-A-C-E-E, on Twitter as well. And I also have a, um, a mobile app that you can download from iTunes. You can also get it for, um, for your Android devices, get it from, from the uh, Google Play stores. And what I do every month when I have uh, I have merchandise and all of these things, I give them away to, to people, the top users. So if you listen to my app, the more you listen, the more you watch the videos, you give viewer points. And the person with the most points, I give away, you know, uh, merchandise, hats, all that type of shit. If I'm in your city, I'm, you might get some tickets for the show, or if I have a show with some other artists, you might be able to come through and, and do the behind-the-scenes thing. So make sure you download that app and really get into the music, you know? So, well, Nazi, thanks again. And let me know when you got a uh, show in New York or, or even when you, you know, you in the, in the man, area. I just, like that. We definitely got to. Man, I just left New York, man. I just left Brooklyn. Yo, see, so you got to keep up with me. I just. Like, I know, but you be moving so quickly. <laughs> I, I, I'll be, I'll be back to, um, I'll be back to New York soon. I'm always in the city. I'll be back to New York soon. So I'm gonna definitely get in touch with you. For sure. Well, thanks again, Nazi, and you have a good rest of the day. And uh, I mean, congratulations. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Be good. Be good. All right. You too.